Good morning, Jennifer. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. All right. Well, American Express is joining Visa and MasterCard in announcing they will now be suspending service in Russia. MasterCard operating in Russia for 25 years. Now, this not only affects credit cards, but also debit cards issued by any Russian banks. How will this impact the people of Russia? Well, this is the problem that the, because of their leaders decision making or Putin's particularly, the Russian people are going to suffer. I have hoped before the Internet was cut off and before access was being cut off by both the Russians and the outside world, that the people of Russia knew and understood that this was not a direct attack on them, that people like the Americans, the United States, and I think our Western allies do distinguish between bad actors in governments and the people of countries. Uh, we've done this with Iran as well, the Iranian people are not the problem the Iranian government is. So I think um, my hope is before internet access got cut off that there was that understanding. I think there still is, but this is a big hit for our American companies. I mean, Visa, 4% of their net revenue comes out of Russia. So I will be interested for, for how long they will do this and whether these sanctions will in fact change Putin's point of view. He doesn't really seem to care too much about the little guy, whether in Ukraine or his own country. Yeah. That is the Russian economy in jeopardy and how is this going to affect the average Russian? Oh, yeah, very much. The, the, the Russian economy is in enormous jeopardy. The ruble is struggling. It's falling. I mean, I think what I look to is, is history can tell us some lessons here. You know, after World War One, with the Treaty of Versailles, uh, there was a real push by the British and the French to punish not just the leaders of Germany, but the German people. And they really put heavy, heavy sanctions on after that war. But it didn't end well, right? We were, we're back at war, a much worse war, more death, um, just 30 years after that. So I think we just have to be really careful in understanding and in our ability to relay that these sanctions are to stop Putin himself, but not to make the Russian people suffer. Of course, we have a problem now. The Russian people are now cut off from communicating with the rest of the world. And this is again part of the sanctions, but it does leave an enormous gap for just Russian propaganda to get to those people and make it look as though the Western world is trying to harm them. Yeah, well, Jen, a moment ago, we talked about all of those credit card companies pulling out of Russia, but the list of companies who have pulled out of Russia just keeps growing, and the companies, they vary across almost every industry. Now, how much damage is that going to do to Russia? Well, I think when you, I mean, everything from Ikea to the card companies, and I, I think the two things that are going to be the most difficult on the Russian people are both the um, the internet, the ability to con connect with the outside world, and then the banking systems. And I think this is going to make the Russian economy collapse. And then that you start to look at what that is going to do or have Putin have the ability to mobilize his military. But this is a man where I have the concern, you know, trapped men fight harder, right? There's a rule mm -hmm. in the world, trap men fight harder. And my concern is that the Russian, the Western world has to give Putin an out. They have to give him a way to back out of this terrible decision making. And while the sanctions are important, while we're hoping the sanctions do work, there has to be a way for him to have an exit. If they don't give him an exit plan, I think he becomes even more reckless and dangerous and the world is pulled into a war. My concern is that he does end up going into a NATO country because things become so desperate in Russia. Does Russia have alternatives to these companies? I mean, I saw IKEA, MasterCard on that list. Are they going to be able to profit from companies in their home-based country to be able to make up from the competition that's leaving? Look, like, like the rest of the world, Russia has appropriated American culture and American businesses. And by the way, we're perfectly happy when people appropriate our culture. Um, we spread goods and services throughout the world. So I do think even in a place like Russia, which is a more closed society, to lose American businesses and Western businesses is going to make life harder on Russians. Now, I don't think many of the generation alive today remember the days back in, you know, after World War II under um, Khrushchev, when there were long bread lines and things were far more difficult than they are today. I think what Putin is doing is, is taking them back to the post-Bolshevik revolutionary post-World War II Khrushchev days, and it's going to make them suffer. Now, the question becomes, how does that impact Putin politically? Will he be overthrown? Who will he be overthrown by? Will it be someone who will steer the country like a Gorbachev? Or will it be sort of a puppet regime that is controlled by Putin behind the scenes? That remains to be seen, and that, I think, is even more dangerous than the situation we're looking at today. Yeah. Well, Jen, I want to kind of talk about the other end of the spectrum. Coca-Cola and Pepsi, 
They're receiving backlash because they're not suspending their service in right. Russia. Many are now saying they're going to boycott those companies. The companies that are not on the list of um, being are pulling out of Russia, should they consider pulling out of Russia at this point? Yeah, I think they should think about it. What's interesting is Coca-Cola has an interesting history. They also continued to serve Germany during World War II, but they did it under a brand called Fanta, which is why we have Fanta today. So, um, you know, there's a couple of things to consider here. First of all, they're private companies. It's a private sector. They have to make their own decisions. The government, the American government shouldn't be involved. The second thing I would say is I don't think all sanctions have to be done at once. Again, that's backing a guy into a corner. You never want to back a rat into the corner. Why? They come out swinging. They come out clawing. You know, trapped men fight harder. We learned that from Thermopolis. So I think that Coke and Pepsi are not pulling out. These are not life-sustaining products or anything that can, you know, markedly improve Russians' lives. But I think it obviously is something all American companies could consider, especially if there is a Russian cyber attack against the United States mm -hmm. again, like there was in June of 2021. Mm -hmm. I think that that would be a new a new day indeed.